Hey there, what's up internet? My name is Black Light Attack. Did you miss me? This is episode 45.5 of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. This is the Chocobo Breeding and Racing Guide, a comprehensive list, comprehensive guide to all things Chocobo in Final Fantasy VII. So, when can you start breeding Chocobos? As soon as you have the High Wind. So even when Cloud is not in your party, when either Tifa or Sid is the head of your party, as long as you have the High Wind, you can actually start breeding Chocobos. In order to do so, just fly over to the Chocobo uh, Ranch, right by the Midgar Zalem, talk to Chocobo Bill, and buy uh, six stables. You're gonna need about 60,000 gil for all six stables. Actually, exactly 60,000 gil, so make sure you save up. If you aren't that well off on money, try just mastering an all materia and then selling it to any vendor, and it'll be worth 1.8 million gil, and then you probably won't need gil for pretty much the rest of the game. You're gonna need a lot more money in greens anyway, so you might as well uh, stockpile some gil. Before we get started, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need a total of five nuts. We need four Karab nuts and one Zeo nut. Karab nuts and Zeo nuts can neither be bought in stores and rather have to be stolen from specific enemies. Karab nuts are found from the Vlacorados enemies, which are found uh, on the northern continent on the plains just outside of the Bone Village. These guys have a lot of HP, so they can be a pain in the ass to kill. Uh, just make sure you steal from them, and then uh, what you can do if you're not doing that much damage at this point in the game yet is just pound them with gravity attacks to get their HP low, and then finish them off with standard attacks, magic spells, whatever suits you. The Zeo Nut can only be found from goblins on Goblin Island. If you fly out with the High Wind, uh, you can land on Goblin Island. It is in the northeast corner of the map. Kind of difficult to spot, but it will be the one tiny little island with one patch of grass to land on and one little patch of forest. Goblins are found inside of the forest. Make sure to grab one Zeo Nut from them, and while you're here, you might as well learn the Goblin Punch enemy skill. You're also going to need a lot of money for Silcus Green. Silcus Green can be bought from Chocobo Sage on the northern continent. His little house can be reached via the High Wind. And we're going to be using these to raise the racing stats of our Chocobos. Chocobos that are good racers are also good breeders. And in order to get special Chocobos, we're going to need to have some racing star Chocobos. Trust me. There are four kinds of special Chocobos. Green, blue, black, and gold. Green and blue are on par with each other. Green can go over mountains, while blue can go over shallow water and rivers. Black is the next step up and can do both of the things that green and blue chocobos can do, and gold chocobos can go literally anywhere, even reaching certain places that the high wind cannot. The reason these are useful is because there are four pieces of extremely powerful materia hidden throughout the world that are only accessible via these chocobos. Now in order to start racing and breeding, we're actually going to need to catch our first chocobos. Whenever you catch a Chocobo and try to move it back to the stables, Chocobo Billy will give it a rating. This is very important because certain quality Chocobos are required to breed certain special Chocobos. Our first step is breeding the green and blue Chocobos, and in order to get those, you're going to need one male and female each good Chocobo, and one male and female each great Chocobo. One thing that makes Chocobo catching a little bit more convenient is that you can tell what quality Chocobo you're getting by what uh, sort of party of enemies they appear with. To catch your good chocobo, you're going to want to go southeast of the gold saucer. If you find a chocobo with either two flatbeat defenders or two spencers along with it, then you have found a good chocobo. Make sure you catch one each, a male and a female. This may take several tries. On the chain of islands to the south by mid eel, you'll find some chocobo tracks, and here you can find great chocobos. If the only enemies it appears with are spirals, then you have found a great chocobo, catch one of each gender. These chocobos are probably going to be released in the future and you're really only using them to breed, so try not to get too attached and name them something that will help you keep them apart, because it's hard to tell the difference between them once they're actually in the stables. So generally I prefer to go with great male, good female, etc. Now what rank a chocobo is in chocobo racing determines how good it is as a breeder. There are four ranks, C, B, A, and S. Feeding a chocobo greens will raise its stats. Additionally, when you breed chocobos with good stats, their offspring will have a combination of even better stats. This means through dedicated breeding you can eventually max all of your chocobo stats, although this is hardly necessary to get an edge on your competition. Now we're going to feed our chocobos some greens in order to raise their stats. Their max potential stats aren't very high, but they're going to get the job done. We only need to get these guys to, I would say, about an A class. You can get away with B, but you only need to get them to A. You don't even have to win any races in the A class, you only have to get them there. I would say feed them each about 20 silkus greens. 
Once chocobos are fed, it's time to get to the races. Head to the Gold Saucer via North Coral and talk to Esther in Chocobo Square. She'll ask if you want to race, tell her yes, and then select your chocobo. You need to win three races in each rank in order to advance to the next one, meaning with each of these chocobos you need to win six races. Again, if you want to, you can only go as far as B-Class, but I personally find A to be a bit more reliable. Your first four chocobos aren't going to be very good racers, but they should be good enough to get to A rank. You should also never encounter Joe, who rides Teo, the black chocobo. He's actually the only threatening op opponent you'll ever really find. He has a very, very, very small chance of appearing in B rank, but for the most part, he sticks to A and S rank. Luckily, we shouldn't really have to be dealing with him at all in these lower ranks. Chocobo racing is fairly easy. I prefer always going with the short track. You can do the long if you want, but it just takes more time, doesn't really offer any better rewards. There's really no point. I stick to the short, personally. There is a pretty reliable way to almost always win chocobo races. I always start by hitting select to switch to manual control. This allows you to actually control your chocobo rather than just letting it do whatever it feels like. Hold down circle to sprint all the way to the top of the spiral. This will usually separate you from the rest of the pack, and as long as you're using the stamina recovery trick, which is holding down R1 and R2 on your controller, this shouldn't burn out quite all of your stamina, just most of it. Once I get to the top of the ramp, I'll tap square a few times to raise my regular running speed while also allowing myself to recover some stamina. For the most part, no other chocobos should be coming up from behind, but if any are getting close, you can always control your chocobo to sort of block it. And then once you get to the end uh, space area, you can sprint to the finish there as well. If your chocobo isn't obeying your commands, it probably doesn't have a very high intelligence rating, so you should feed it some greens uh, to try to improve that. Once you win, you'll get an item as a reward, or you can cash in its GP equivalent. This is a fantastic way to farm GP for uh, stocking up for Battle Square. Once you have all four chocobos up to A rank, head back to the farm and get breeding. Breed your great male with your good female and use a Karab nut. Always make sure to save your game, because sometimes your chocobos will come out uh, the wrong genders. We're going to need the blue and the green to breed together, so we don't want them both coming out male or female. Breed your great female with your good male, and give them a Karab nut, and you should get a green chocobo. Conversely, breed your great female with your good male, and you should come out with a blue chocobo. As I mentioned, they should be opposite genders. If not, do a quick reset and try again. Now, before these chocobos can be bred, they need to mature, and this game tends to measure uh, lengths of time by random battles. I tend to chill out and just run around outside the chocobo ranch with an enemy lore materia on, get into about 15 battles, and then they're usually ready to go. You can really mature your chocobos before or after you race them. For some reason, although you can't breed chocobos right after they're born, you can race them. So whenever you're ready, feed them about 30 silkus greens each, and then fly to the gold saucer. Now you'll notice your blue and your green chocobo are much better racers than your standard yellow chocobos. They tend to be faster, have more stamina, and be smarter, and best of all, the green chocobo is actually not affected by the slowdown effect that the space area has on all of the other chocobos. For some reason, the blue chocobo is still affected, but you'll find that the black and the gold chocobo also share the same property as the green. Now these guys you really only have to get up to A class, meaning you only have to win uh, 6 races with them in order to get a black chocobo. Just like the uh, green and blue chocobo we only needed uh, B class parents, but I tend to race them up to S because they're more than capable of making it that far. And It's only 9 races each for them to win and there are some great GP and item rewards in the uh, A ranks. Once you have your chocobos ranked up, fly back to Chocobo Ranch and let's get breeding again. This time we're going to select our green and our blue chocobo, breed them together with another Karab nut, and we should, if everything went right, get a black chocobo. Now the black chocobo actually needs to breed with a wonderful chocobo in order to produce a gold chocobo. Head to the northern continent with the high wind and land on the peninsula on the kind of west shore. Head a little bit north and you should find some chocobo tracks. Here you can catch wonderful chocobos. Wonderful chocobos will always appear with two of these little rabbit creatures, also known as jumping. And unfortunately, this guy we're also going to have to race up. Now, wonderful chocobos are quite a step above great and good chocobos, but they're not quite on the level of your bred special chocobos. The downside is we actually do need to get this guy to A rank, and I tend to go for S rank. The wonderful chocobo is definitely capable of reaching S rank, but it might be a little bit harder, and uh, the wonderful chocobo is going to have a very difficult time beating Joe should he show up during any of the A rank races. So once you've caught your wonderful chocobo, feed both your black and your wonderful chocobo 30 silgas greens, fly them over to the gold saucer, get them raced up to A or S rank, whichever is your preference. 
Once you have your chocobos raced up, it is time for the final night of passion between these birds. Mate them together, and if you did everything right, you should have. Congratulations, the best chocobo in the game, the gold chocobo. This thing is an absolute beast for racing, and if there's anything in the prize pool that you want from any of the chocobo races, this is the way to do it. The gold chocobo is far and away the best chocobo in the game. If there's nothing you want from the races, though, it is time to collect our materia. Now, you can collect these materia progressively as you unlock each of the special chocobos, but the gold chocobo can also be used to just collect all four of them. The first Materia Cave is located north of Mediol. If you have a blue chocobo, then you're going to need to navigate a sort of maze of shallow water and mountainous islands. It can be a little fun to navigate through this. I tend to just go with the gold chocobo anyway. But once you get there, you will find the Quadra Magic support Materia. Quadra Magic will allow you to cast the same spell that it is paired with four times in a row at reduced power, but for the cost of one cast. The next Materia Cave is located on the westernmost continent by Wutai. You need a green or better chocobo to access this one, and it contains Mime, one of the best and most overpowered uh, command Materia in the game. Mime will cause you to perfectly mimic the last party member's action taken before the usage of Mime. As far as I know, the only thing you can't mimic from your other party members are Limit Breaks. Additionally, if you're mimicking a spell or a summon or something to that effect, it costs no MP, meaning that you can chain cast incredibly powerful summons uh, infinitely without any repercussions. And that's going to be really important when we get the final materia here. The third materia cave is located uh, just across from Mount Coral over the mountain and across the river. You'll need a black or better chocobo to obtain this one. This one contains the HP MP materia, which uh, will actually just swap the character's HP and MP uh, maximums, meaning the most HP you can have is 999, and the most MP you can have is 9999, whereas normally it's the other way around. This materia is actually complete garbage, uh, in my opinion. You can cast a lot of spells, yes, but you will also die to like pretty much everything late game. I don't think it's very useful. The final materia is found on a place called Round Island, which doesn't even appear on the map. It is a round, sort of mountainous island way out in the ocean in the very northeastmost corner of the map. The high wind cannot land here because it's completely filled with forest, but the gold chocobo can make it. Inside, you will find the ultimate final summon spell of the game, Knights of Round, which I'm sure is short for Knights of the Round Table. And this is far and away the most powerful single spell in the game. The spell will hit 13 times with non-elemental, unmitigated damage, with the standard cap of 9,999 on each hit, meaning if you're maxing out your damage with this thing, you can do, in just one cast, just under 130,000 points of unmitigated, non-elemental damage. Both Knights of the Round and Mime are going to be incredibly invaluable when we go for Ruby and Emerald Weapon, the two hardest bosses in the game. You guys will see what that's all about later on, but until then, that should be it. For the Chocobo Breeding Guide, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yes, this series is back to completion. We're going to finish it. Hope you guys found this guide helpful and informative as always. And I'll see you guys for episode 46 next time. Goodbye.